everybody, welcome to a very special holiday edition of the Klaus and Q Show live on ON TV. I'm Jason Klaus being joined by my tag team partner in this endeavor, Quad L. Edwards. Uh, Q. <laughs> 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 I, I tried to hold it in, bro. But, uh, if you are watching this live on the Facebook feed, you realize we're a couple of minutes late here uh, uh, coming on the air. If, if you're live, it can't go wrong, right? I mean, that's just the way it is. It's winter time. We are in the state of Michigan. It's mm -hmm. a crapshoot, right? Um, yep. You're here safe. That's what, that, that's what counts. How's things? You know what? I can't complain, man. You know, the roads might be bad, but you know what? We're still in one piece, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's important. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we had plan B in place. You know, you, you, you had texted me and said we were uh, stuck in traffic. You and your lovely wife, who is with us here uh, in, in Lake Orion, which is always, always a pleasure. Um, but uh, we, we did have plan B. But we don't have to incorporate that because Q is here and here we go. This is going to be a very special dual topic episode of the Klaus and Q show on this episode. Uh, the, obviously, because of the promoter, we're both wrestling fans. I'm, I'm a promoter at heart. Like we save what would, would be what would be perceived the main focal point or in this case, the, the, the main event. Um, towards the end part of the show because you want yep. everybody to stick around to watch or listen to the main event. That's right. On this episode, that is not the case. This is what we, we would be calling a like a dual main event because we're going to tackle two things that are very important, and they happen to happen in the month of November. We're, go we're going to kick off this week's episode with talking about and observing in our own way uh, Veterans Day that took place uh, last weekend. And Veterans Day is one of those things, Q, um, extremely important. Uh, but it, up until recently, like a lot of the topics that we have talked about on the show here, regardless of what the subject is, like last month we sat up here and talked about breast cancer awareness, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And in that we discuss why why hasn't it been until relatively recently that there's been such a, a renewed spotlight on that veterans day is very much the same thing yeah and like i when i did some research on this like i i have always been appreciative of veterans day because of what 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 the meaning is a lot of people they get, you know, veterans they confuse with Memorial Day. Like right, they, right. They think it's just one and the same. It's just celebrated in different parts of the year. That is not the case. Um, you know, a friend of ours, a co-worker, union brother, Will, Will Narona, is part of uh, our, our veterans committee for where we work up in Flint. And I had actually actually asked him to come on the show, but his schedule and ours just would not meet up. Uh, Will's a very busy guy. He, you know, he has his hands in a lot of mm, projects yes, yes, around the community. And like, if you if you know that name, it's because he was on uh, the the Klaus to the Heart show that we did here on ON TV last year before the the rebrand and the relaunch of this particular show. One of the last ones, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was one of the last uh, guests that we had on for for this, and um, he was part of a very cool celebration in Flint. The they they redid McFarland Park in in yes. downtown Flint, and that's kind of why I wanted Will or. Um, or, or David Garcia, who is the the uh, the head of the Veterans Committee, or I guess the chairman of, if, yeah. if you will, um, they put in a lot of time, a lot of effort, and anybody who knows either one of those guys, but for for me, obviously, I know Will a lot better than than I know David, but. Um, it's a passion project, man, and I feel like because of just what the magnitude and what the, the the purpose of Veterans Day is, you got to have more people like Will and, and and those who really embrace what Veterans Day is all about. Because right. if you are not showing appreciation for 
the men and women who served in in the armed forces to protect our freedoms. Right. That's right. what it comes down to, right? Because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do things like this. You wouldn't be able to, to do half of the stuff that, that you are into because of the freedoms that these men and women pr protect. Veterans Day is to you know to to clear up any misconception. Uh, it is to thank those who are still with us, who who have served in the armed forces, whereas Memorial Day is the day to honor those that we had lost. Um, Veterans Day, what what does it mean to you? Uh, just like you said, uh, you know, there, there there's a few veterans in my family that I that I. Uh, you know, just like honor. I definitely want to honor them on the air right now. You know, all the ones that did serve and still, you know, going through the process of serving. But uh, just, and just like you said, the uh, confusion with uh, Veterans Day and Memorial Day is like so prominent. And, you know, people are so confused of uh, what they're celebrating. It's just a day off to them, you know, and it's, I feel like, you know, we need more awareness to it, mm -hmm. and uh, just just the fact that you can confuse it with another holiday is already an issue. But also not knowing what it is all around, you know, it's just I, I feel like that's a big issue, and I think that's something that we need to bring awareness to, and uh, definitely for uh, you know people like Will that. Uh, I'm, there's people in the plant that don't even know what he's doing, and right. there's people in the plant that don't know what he's working on or where he came from, you know. And, and I love the fact that he told his story on the Klaus and the the Klaus back the Klaus to, to the, the heart, heart show. show. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's he's one he's one of those amazing guys that we've been privileged to to work with and work alongside. Yeah. But to see somebody, and I, I know we're focusing a lot on him, but they're just because that's who I know. You know? Right, he's a close one. He is, but yeah. there's so many people, not just with our local in Flint, but like across the nation, you yeah. saw these reports of the celebrations, the parades, these 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 memorial celebrations at like for us in Flint, in the Flint area, it was McFarland Park. It was a big damn deal and well attended from, from what I understand. I, I wanted to make it out there. I was not able to, but like it, the meaning of it was not lost on me. Um, now, the one thing when I think about veterans, I, I know we're not supposed to put people on pedestals, right, right, right? In the grand scheme of things. But I feel like when we're talking about the veterans, the men and women who serve our country and essentially serve each and every one of us, you, everybody, like what they do means something to us on some level. Whether you agree with it or not, that's just the way it is. So when I hear these stories that these veterans are coming back home after these tours and things of this nature, and they're not being provided for, they're right. not being taken care of by yeah. the community, by the government. Look, if you sign up for any branch of the armed services, armed forces, and you go out overseas, you go out and put your life on the line to protect what we have, as American citizens, right. in my opinion, now uh, I should I should be careful of this. I and I realize that because people take a lot of things out of context nowadays for clickbait. Um, if there is a certain criteria met, okay, uh, unofficially, of course, these people should not have to worry about whether or not they have housing. They have food on the table. Exactly. They have uh, insurance to take care of their health needs. None of this should be a concern of them, for them. And the fact that we have veterans, men and women, living on the streets in some of the biggest cities in the world that generate millions, if not billions of dollars in revenue, why are we not taking care of these people? Drives me nuts. I agree. Yeah, that, and that is a big thing right there. I feel like that's a, and that's the thing that's going under the bridge. People are not paying attention to it. They don't even know. Uh, it's, it's crazy because I actually ran into someone uh, 
I think it was last year, uh, out there on the street with a sign that said, I am a veteran. Yeah. And, you know, I, I need help. Need help, you know. Not, you know, I just drop, I drop off food sometimes, drop off, uh, you know, change or whatever I need to drop off. But the fact that it came to that point, you know, and, and I feel like that sometimes the wrong people are being taken care of. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. The wrong people are being taken care of. But you got all these men and men and women that uh, that served and for for me, you, for everything, the freedoms that we have, and they're out there, you know, just suffering and and not being taken care of. That is a big problem, and it's almost like it needs to be that needs to be put on a national scale. We, I mean, everybody needs to be aware of what's going on, right? You know, because that's we're talking about veterans, you right. know, and it's it, it's crazy because we like to give people their flowers after they're gone, right? And when, but they're, they're still here. We need to be celebrating them and taking care of them, even as a community. If if, if America doesn't step up, what what about us as a community? You know, where where are the 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 drives? And I feel I know there's some out there, but right. why isn't it more in your face? Is you know I feel like that's an issue that we have because there's not enough awareness. Just like we said at the beginning of the program. A lot of people don't even know what Veterans Day is. So imagine how many people, especially young people that's coming up now, that don't even know what a veteran is. Right. You know, and they don't know what they represent. You know, they they don't have the 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 level of importance of uh, the veterans that's still out there. You know, and it's crazy because uh, we there's another veteran that uh, we work with. He's not on our shift, but he actually works. He used to work out with Will. And, uh, and, and every time I used to see them working out in the gym back at my old plant down in Detroit, uh, you know, I always say kudos to you guys, man. Right. Kudos to you guys. Both of them serve. And uh, I always wanted to join in on their workouts because they used to – they were very intense. I was just going to say, <laughs> I, I can imagine what the intensity level <laughs> might, might have been like. But, I mean, make absolute no mistake about it. And, like – I should have, and I feel bad at this point because I wish I had, like I've always had an appreciation for Veterans Day and what it stood for. Like I didn't understand why, like I tried to get the the information on everything. Like I want to know why things are the way that they are so I can, you never know when you need it for, like a trivia question or yeah. something like that. Like yeah. why is Veterans Day on, on November 11th? Well. It is because, upon my research, that is uh, it coordinates with the official end of World War One in uh, 1918. Um, I didn't know that, I didn't know you that. know, and, and how many <laughs> other people don't know that. My point here is this, and I I'll say this before, uh, and I'll let you have have your final say on this segment before we go to break to tackle the second half of this week's show. Um, I want to say this: I am calling upon. All community leaders. I am calling upon politicians. I am calling upon business owners. I am calling upon decent men and women in the community. If you know of veterans in your area that need help, that need some sort of an assistance, what it doesn't matter what it is. I feel like in some regard, we as, as Americans and neighbors have something of a responsibility to take care of those who took care of us. And, and continue to take care of us to provide us, like we said, with these freedoms that we have. It is a damn shame that we have you know, people who have literally laid their lives on the line for these freedoms and these privileges that we have as, uh, as the, the citizens of the United States of America. Under no circumstances should they be wondering where their next hot meal is going to be, whether or not they're going to have shelter to sleep under. We're coming into winter months, and if if history has been any indication, we are on track for a, a particularly brutal winter. There is no reason why our veterans should be freezing their tails off. I'm exactly. trying. I'm trying to keep it PG. Um, <laughs> there's no reason why they have to worry about whether or not they're going to survive to the next day. Exactly. And uh, and, and and I just want to encourage the veterans. You know, 
hang on. You know, it's and we honor you and everything that you have done. We thank you and we honor you. And there are people that do appreciate you. There are people that do appreciate you. And we have to do better. Mm -hmm. We as a nation, we as a country, we as the United States. It's not the divided states. We need to be together and we need to be able to put all differences aside and honor those who, you know, set all these freedoms into motion. And I, and I, I truly thank you from the bottom of my heart and honor you and everything that you guys have done. And I do believe we do need more. We need more awareness to it. I think Veterans Day need to be more in your face mm -hmm. instead of just a day off of work, you know? And that's, that's, that's my big thing right there. I, I totally agree with that. And yeah, I know that there are programs and organizations in place that, that do take care of, or they at least try to, mm -hmm. they at least offer some sort of guidance to these different organizations that, that can offer you some degree of help. Listen, I can understand where pride comes into play here, um, and sometimes people have a hard time asking for help, but here's the thing, man, like you have more than paid your dues. And if you need a helping hand, there's absolutely nothing wrong. It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you a failure. It doesn't make you anything. When in, when in, in all reality, you are the ultimate hero. So yep. allow the community that you served, the people that you served, with your selflessness to be rewarded and to allow us to give it back to you. Yes. So... With that, we are going to run a quick timeout, and we will be back with more of the Klaus and Q Show live on ONTV right after this. The Lagorian Lighted Christmas Parade has been spreading joy for more than 25 years, and it returns to downtown Lake Orion on Saturday, December 3rd at 6 p.m. This year's theme is Kids in Candyland, and parade participants in downtown businesses are encouraged to light up the night. Marching bands, costume characters, and colorful floats will make their way down Broadway Street in the heart of the village. And of course, Santa and Mrs. Claus will be bringing up the rear as they usher in the holiday season. The Orion Area Parade Group invites you to come out to the 2022 Lighted Christmas Parade on December 3rd at 6 p.m. I love Lake Orion. What a great town. Follow Orion Lighted Parade on Facebook for the most recent updates or visit OrionLightedParade.com. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 ho. Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Set, go. Enjoy the winter wonderland that is Orion Township by coming out to the annual Snow Dash 5K on Sunday, December 18th. The race begins at 9 a.m. at the Orient Center on Joslin Road and takes runners and walkers out onto the scenic Pollyann Trail toward Civic Center Park before circling back toward the finish line where it all started. All participants will receive a medal as you cross the finish line and all levels of competitors are invited to take part from beginner to advanced, young and old alike. For more information, you can call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. I kind of feel like I have some uh, Christmas-style spandex that I could wear for that particular <laughs> run if you want to, like, team up and go. I mean, we could be we could be a part of this thing. Could be. Welcome back to the Klaus and Q Show. Here we are on ONTV. I'm Jason Klaus being joined by... Quad L. Edwards, and um, a couple of things here, like, I mean, we were kind of make, making a joke of it as we came back on the air here, but, like, I really dig these, I, as I get older especially, I really dig these these community events, like this 5K run on December the 18th, the lighted parade on, on December 3rd. 
I really love that small town. I mean, Lake Orion, yeah. Oxford area, you know, it's a bigger area, but like there's still that small town charm to it, you know, and I think that's yeah. what I love most about it. Well, yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to be at that parade. Anybody want to come and see this guy? Listen, we'll set up a booth. We you can. Know uh, we'll sign autographs and take selfies. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> so we. Uh, I mean, obviously, we we spent the uh, the first part of the show talking about Veterans Day. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a very big deal in the month of November. But now our focus now shifts uh, to the latter part of the month, and of course, uh, this is. Uh, one of those holidays that uh, if, if, if any holiday is going to really, really spark a um, potential argument, it's this coming Thursday, right? Oh, yeah, Thanksgiving yeah. is coming up. Um, yeah. A lot of people, they're, I mean, you're on one side of the coin or the other. Either this is your day, <laughs> this is the day that you look forward to, or this is the springboard into the, the, the Christmas season. <laughs> yep. Where are you at on Thanksgiving? Yeah, I love Thanksgiving. You know, Thanksgiving is a big family uh, day for me. Uh, I know it's kind of shifted over the years a little bit towards, uh seem like it's more and more of a Christmas yeah. holiday now, but, you know, I'm still um, a Thanksgiving guy. I love gathering with the family and uh it's not even about the food. I, I'm not big on the food. I'm just big on the family actually getting together because that could be a hard thing right there by itself. And uh, it's funny. I was driving uh, down the road a couple couple weeks ago, and uh, real close to here, the real close to the studio, and uh, I seen a bunch of turkeys outside, and I said, ah, they're getting ready. Dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Planning hey, their escape route. I said, they don't know what's about to happen. <laughs> but a- you know, just, yeah, they were gathering. They, they were doing their last gathering. So I just love <laughs> the gathering of family <laughs> for Thanksgiving. You know, it's and really, it's and I always tell people, it's not about the food. It's right there in the title. It's about giving thanks. You yeah. got to be thankful for. Um, you know, what you do have, what... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm not taking away from what you're saying. You're, you're talking some very deep stuff. I'm thinking about their final gathering, and I can't help it. I'm sorry about that. Listen, you got to be thankful. <laughs> thankful you're not a turkey. Exactly. Uh, let, let, <laughs> um, this, this show this week on here is actually the start of what I look at as holiday week every year, not just for what we do on ONTV, but for the podcast network, because like, you know, these are my cheap plugs. Um, like tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday are all centered around the holiday. Like I have podcasts that drop on those days. The real podcast drops at midnight here tonight. As a matter of fact, Claws to the Heart on Tuesday, Power Trip and th- through the 80s on Wednesday. Uh, but they're all ge- all geared around um, Thanksgiving, you know, and 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 the different perspectives from my different co-hosts, because like what Amy talked about on the real podcast and what Sean's going to talk about on the 80s podcast are going to be they're not going to be the same, you know, because right, everybody right. has had their own own traditions, their own ways of looking at things in terms of what this holiday is. Now, self-admittedly, anybody who knows me on a personal level knows that my whole year centers around Christmas. Well, that and WrestleMania, but that's in the spring. Uh, but here, <laughs> listen, we're fired up this week. I, I, you know, make no mistake about it. Um, but I'm, I, you know, I very much kind of looked past you know, Thanksgiving in favor for Christmas because when I felt like that was my last obstacle, that was my last roadblock. <laughs> I, you get me past Thursday, yeah. and and you know we're on the fast track <laughs> to the North Pole. Um, as I've gotten older, and as well, I mean the last five years, really. I mean, and anybody who knows my story knows what what I'm referring to. But right. um, I have a greater appreciation for Thanksgiving, for what it is. And when I got to the studio uh, here tonight, 
like I had a very good conversation with our director Joe Johnson and he illustrated kind of his his perspective on things and like he nailed it like he put everything in perspective in terms of what this holiday is supposed to be about and it took something like a worldwide pandemic to really hammer that <laughs> home because he 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 could he relate a story to me the thanksgiving of 2020 oh, man. um you know that was like we were very deep into the covid thing right you know? right uh he spent his holiday both thanksgiving and christmas alone in his apartment with like a frozen tv dinner but it took something like that to realize how important the people that we share our lives with really are. And we often take that time and those people for granted yes, because we just feel like, like, like they're always going to be there. Um, as he's relaying his story, like I'm thinking about my own personal experiences with, with the COVID year, with just a let, that, that, that chunk of time from here and now to the previous five years, just how much change mine my family has undergone. We lost, no, we, we lost my mom, we lost my brother. That's huge, right? Um, but it takes things like that to put things in perspective. Right. And, and it shouldn't, to appreciate what we have and the blessings that we have shouldn't be regulated to one day or one weekend. You know what I mean? Right. But I mean, right. that's what yeah. it is. And that's because we are so busy with life and everything that that's involved with it. But um, at the same time, man, like it should it you, you should not wait until something catastrophic happens to really embrace the people that are in your lives, your friends, your family mm -hmm. and the reason for the holiday. Right. Exactly. I'm, I'm telling you, that pandemic humbled a lot of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and, and I remember, uh, you know, that 2020 Thanksgiving um, time, and it was almost like we were all negotiating how we're going to set the Zoom up. And I remember, uh, like, yeah, we'll we, we just meet on Zoom, you know, we'll, you know, talk and eat. That, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> that absolutely sucks. I mean, can you imagine dinner? You got a dinner table with a computer sitting in front of you, looking at your loved ones on a screen. And, and, and that could, that, that is insane if you really think about it. And I, the fact, and, and Joe's story, sitting at home by himself, we had a rough 2020. I feel like 2021, 2022, your Thanksgiving should have been popping. Yeah, It should be on point because we've been humbled by 2020. Everything that happened in 2020, I mean, we should want to get together. So th th this time, I believe I put so much excitement on Thanksgiving that we're able to get a get together with the ones that are still here because even though we lost a lot of people in our family, but we still have families left. And I feel like we need to get together because we don't know if this is our last Thanksgiving or not, you yeah. know? So I feel like it's important to get together, enjoy each other, watch the football game. Whatever you're doing, do it together and enjoy it. I mean, you know, put a, you might argue a couple times, you might argue a little bit, you know, Detroit Lions, you know, that's an argument right there. Right. It's so, the, the turkey, should we fry it? Should we bake it? What are we, what are we doing? Right. I mean, so there's so many things that we could do, but we need to at least get together. Let's get past that part right there. Let's get together, and then what happens, happens. Yeah. You know, you, there's a lot of, of traditions that come into play with the holidays. A lot of them are more geared towards Christmas, but... Uh, like we were talking about on one one of the podcasts is why isn't Thanksgiving held in higher regard by the majority of people? Like right. there uh, there is a contingent of the population. Like I said, like this is their day. Um, but for I dare I say the majority of the people, like I said, it, this is a springboard. Why is it? Is it because 
There is no like imaginary icon character that is associated with it. Like Christmas has Santa Claus. Even like like Amy had mentioned, Valentine's Day has has the Cupid, and the Leprechaun mm -hmm. is with St. Patrick's Day. Uncle Sam for the Fourth of July, the the Rabbit for Easter. Like, but what do you have for Thanksgiving? A turkey, a pilgrim, whatever. <laughs> um, but. At the same time, like we did a you know a pretty significant deep dive into this, and it's like there needs to be more more traditions incorporated. I think, especially like what you're saying, coming out of a pandemic year, c coming out of COVID in 2020. I mean, even yeah, we're two years removed from that, but like we're still very much. Um, dealing with the ramifications of that in some right. regard. Yep. We're getting somewhat back to normal or whatever normal is going to look like. But, I mean, you th you get rid of one obstacle, you got a new one, right? Right, now, Inflation right. and all this other stuff. I yep. mean, we can sit here for hours and talk about that. That's not what, what you tuned in for. Uh, but at the same time, man, we, we need to get back to, you know, you've heard me say it a million times, the basic fundamentals. Yes. And it's for me to come on here and say, look, we need to acknowledge and accept Thanksgiving. What, you know, yes, Christmas is on the horizon. And yes, I'm very excited about that. Or I had traditionally been this right. year. This year is a little bit off, off the norm, but be that as it may, um, we, we really need to find common ground, okay? Now, yes, I agree. there are going to be things that you do that you talk about with your family that is going to potentially conjure up um, a disagreement or two. A lot of this is revolved around politics and religion, okay? If you know without, with, without question that an argument is going to stem from an <laughs> from a conversation based mm -hmm. around these two things. Here's an idea. Don't talk about it. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's not that hard to figure out. You know, if you want to talk politics with Uncle Ned, wait till the day after. Talk to him on the phone, send a text message, something yep. like that. It don't have to be done at the dinner table. You know what I mean? <laughs> I Why is this such a thing? Uh, it's, people like to stir up stuff. Yeah, you know, it's crazy because you got family members that want to stir up family members, and just to get the arousal out of themselves, you know. And I, I, I want to win this battle. You know, he we argued last year, and he got the best of me. <laughs> so we got I, I got to get back at him. The so, rematch. Uh, <laughs> that's what. It's like a challenge. You know, you're sitting there, you're sitting at the dinner table, you're like challenge, <laughs> and. Th <laughs> Why though? That's that's the thing. There's nothing. There's nothing at stake. You know. Right. I mean. <laughs> so what, are you gonna give him the turkey leg because you won or he won or what's what is what is really going on there? I feel like there's more of a deep root for that. But uh, it's <laughs> jockey in four position. I feel like yeah. you know a lot of these people will. I mean, they're trying to establish some sort of pecking order or some sort of dominance. You know, we. <laughs> Because we're wrestling fans, we use the term head of the table, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, everybody wants to be at the proverbial head of the table. Right. Listen, it doesn't matter where you sit at the table. It, it really doesn't in the grand scheme of things. Uh, because if, if, if you're putting yourself on a pedestal above <laughs> any other member of your family, uh, you, you've kind of got the wrong idea coming right out of the gate, in my opinion. You guys should all, you know, families should be all on one level playing field. And I realize, look, I realize it's going to vary because we all come from, you know, we all have different personalities and things of this nature. And there are, uh, how do I say, bad eggs. Yeah. Bad eggs, okay? Everybody um, If this was the podcast, <laughs> I would have used another word. But um, we'll just say bad eggs. And obviously, like, you can't help but kind of put put yourself above them just because that's how you view view things. But at the same time, what if things are like that because that individual who is perceived to be 
the black sheep or the bad egg. Mm -hmm. What if they need some help? And this is that time of the year that they look forward to because they do feel included. What if this right. was the only time of the year that they felt like that they were included in something meaningful? You know, they see their, uh, their siblings, their parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, they're getting all excited about the holiday and and everything that it's supposed to be about and like deep down they're excited too because they're getting something that they primarily don't get every, every other day of the year and that's 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 a shame but incorporating these traditions and things of this nature we very much have to keep those intact i feel like right right you know even if it is like well the, the detroit lions and listen this is the only reason why i wore a football jersey on the on tv show because you know this is part of our tradition in our right, house yep. you know you get up you watch the parade mm -hmm, in the morning yep. nine o'clock when i was a kid it was all about macy's parade out, yep. out of manhattan That's what um, we watched. But now that I'm older, I, I have a better appreciation for the one in Detroit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not as star-studded. You're not <laughs> going to see all the celebrities and, and, and things of this nature, but it's Detroit. And, like, for us, we are in Michigan. Like, from where we are now, we're less than an hour away from, from the Motor City as it is. Yeah. Um, but that was part of the tradition. You watch the parade. You kept your rear end out of the kitchen. Or else my mom had a wooden spoon right, and yep. wasn't afraid to use it, you know. <laughs> uh, if we were absolutely, absolutely famished, we're like, Mama, we're so hungry. She'd throw us a Triscuit cracker <laughs> right. to just keep us appeased. <laughs> but that's what, you know, you watch the Detroit Lions. Yeah. You're having your dinner with with the family and stuff like this because that's, that's tradition, you know, regardless. At 1 o'clock or noon, it's noon, right, yep. on, on Thursday. On, at noon, you're watching. And I don't care where you are in the country. You're watching our football you're watching team. It. Yep. They're going to lose more often than not, <laughs> but you're watching our football team. Um, you know, I can remember a time when that was the only game on Thursday. Now yep. it's yep. ballooned up to three. You know, you got your afternoon, you got your midday, then you got your night games. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's, that's very much a thing. For us... <laughs> Here we go again. Uh, this is Survivor Series weekend for, for us. That's right. right. I, That's right. This is also the weekend we put the Christmas tree up. Yeah. Or or traditionally uh -huh. I have because uh, when I was an adult, it goes up on Survivor Series weekend, comes down Royal Rumble weekend. <laughs> um, what are your favorite like memories and, and traditions of this particular holiday? Oh man, you 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 hit it with the uh, the Macy's parade. We used to watch that, you know, first thing. I mean, that was our thing. We'll sit planet and just watch watch the Macy's parade. Uh, we'll uh, setting up that tree. Oh man, we'll set that tree up. Man, I got some great memories when it, <laughs> when it came to that. My mom used to let the kids set the tree up every year. Every year. That's phenomenal. Yeah. The tree was so tacky. Sure. Oh my goodness, we put so much mess on that tree. I mean, the little streamers. We we had all kind of stuff. We used to have these Christmas bells. We used to sing, I think, twelve different Christmas songs. And uh, over the years, it started to get tangled up. We're kids. We don't know how to untangle that. Sure. So, <laughs> and they were kind of heavy. So uh, <laughs> we have this little tree, and. Uh, We'll have uh, all the bells. We'll try to get the bells around as best as we can. But as the years go on, the bells will be on a little certain end, and the tree will start leaning because of the because of the weight, because we couldn't get them around the tree anymore. But we loved it so much. <laughs> we loved the songs, the twelve songs that he used to sing. That we didn't care. Right. The tree was looking like a mess. We wouldn't show it to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was, and then it was getting old, and it was starting to get real skinny, like it was losing weight. I mean, <laughs> we had this tree for uh, pretty much my entire childhood before we got a new one, and uh, and I feel like once we got that new one, it, it it felt different because we didn't know how to treat it because it was so, you know, full. Sure. You know, we had this little skippy uh, Charlie Brown tree. Um, 
it was bigger than Charlie Brown's tree, but it felt like Charlie Brown's tree as it was as the days go on, like the leaves were falling off or something. Yeah. But uh, it just meant so much, you know. You know, doing that with my mom, my sister, uh, sometimes my brother. He, uh, my brother's twelve years older than I am, but he will come and help every once in a while. But uh, yeah, we it was such a blast, man. Just putting that tree up. So well, that, I mean, that was something that you very much looked forward to yes. during Thanksgiving, I, because I know that a lot of that is centered around Christmas and stuff like that. And that's the issue that I had when I was recording the show with, with Amy is we very much tried to keep it regulated to Thanksgiving. It's hard. <laughs> but it is. And then as the show was going on, we were kind of, of, of diving into why is this a thing? A lot of it stems from one thing. A, 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 the, the reason why, for a lot of people, this is not across the board and I understand that, so you know, don't send me your hate tweets <laughs> if there's still tweeting going on. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, there's there is one big reason why Thanksgiving is treated as a springboard to Christmas. You ready for it? I'm ready. Black Friday. Black Friday. Yeah. Black Friday has been a contributor to the deterioration of what Thanksgiving was, because what it was in the '50s, '60s, and '70s is a stark contrast to what it started to become in the 80s, 90s, and where we're at now. Yep. Everything is about the sale. Everything is about yep. the almighty dollar. Yep. Right? You, you, yep. you start sacrificing. Now, let me back up a little bit. I was very much somebody that looked forward to Black Friday shopping, okay? Because I enjoy people watching. <laughs> and you <laughs> will <too>. see humanity <laughs> On full display. Oh man! During, <laughs> during five o'clock in the morning at the Walmart. Okay. Oh, God. Now, the issue became when these big box stores started to be open on Thursday, the day yeah, of that, the holiday. Yeah. Now, ridiculous. I made no, and I, I mean, I got into arguments about this uh, over the years, like. I don't care what you could be selling a PlayStation Five for a hundred bucks. If I can only pick that up between the hours of six and seven on the day of Thanksgiving, I don't need it that bad. Right. Because what that does, that tells the men and women who work at these stores that their time with their family takes a back seat to the Almighty Dollar. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with that. And I don't shop at stores like that. Now, it, now in the last couple of years, and this was another, another one of the few silver linings of COVID, it made people like in higher ups, because make no mistake yeah. about it, your Best Buys, your Home Depots, your Walmarts, your, your all of this, like they're run by boards of directors. Yeah. How many of them people are actually working the cash register on Black Friday? Exactly. Not a one of them. Not, not a one of them. They are sitting at home in their plush little homes on the lake with their families. They don't care right. because all that money is just getting dumped right into mm -hmm. the end of the corporate account. At some point or another, they started to realize, and I don't know if it's a backlash from the, the consumer that said, this is not right. Now, there are people that very much were involved in that. I couldn't justify it. I wouldn't justify it. The only thing that I could justify being open on an actual holiday is things of, of, of essential use, gas stations. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if you are traveling, if you're going over the river and through the woods to grandma's house, you got to have gas. You, know, exactly. you have to have the opportunity yep. to get gas. Okay, so I, I was one that would go get the newspaper very early Thursday morning. And I would plan out my map of attack for Black Friday, but it was on Friday. Exactly. It was not on, on Thursday. So I feel like we started to see that shift that is like, okay, we're going to try to run on Thursdays and see how this goes. <laughs> well, that didn't go well. I mean, the, for the consumer, it was wonderful because they, they took advantage of these big deals and stuff like this. That's not what this is all about. 
and that's why there was so much focus taken off Thanksgiving because they were no world, no longer worried about taking that time to be around the dinner mm -hmm. table or to say thanks or or to just at bare minimum enjoy each other's company. Right. It was to go spend money. It was to go and make sure that the people that work at these jobs, not because they necessarily want to, because they have to, you know, make ends right. meet. Yep. You know, th this is what they had to do in order to have the job. I'm glad in some regards that these big box stores are starting to dial back from that. Yeah. They are allowing yeah. these people to spend the holiday with their families. They're closed on Thursday. I think that's fantastic, and that's the way it, it should be from, be from like here that. on yeah, out. Yeah. You want to open up at midnight on Friday? By all means, open up. Go I, ahead. I'll, I'll, yeah. be, I'll be in line. <laughs> But I ain't doing it on at eight o'clock in the morning on Thursday. Nothing is worth that. That's to me. insane, man. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I got a nice little story here. I love uh, stories. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and you know, I work at a at a Target. I'm not gonna say what Target, but I, it was in Kansas. I worked at a Target um, during the whole Thursday fiasco um, of Black Thursday, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, they called me in on Thursday to um, work a shift. I didn't know what I was gonna be doing. This was my first Black Friday experience with this company. Uh, for one, you know, we celebrate, we had to celebrate Thanksgiving pretty much in the morning because it's shortened because of what's going on with Black Friday now. So we celebrated Thanksgiving and then I had to go to work. Right. And uh, just the thought of missing out on what's going on at home you know, even at a younger age that I was at, you know, it, it, it was too much. It was too much. And um, they didn't even, they had so many people, you know, working and setting up and getting ready for the, the rage of the bulls, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody setting up, getting ready. And I'm telling you, it was almost, it almost felt like we were, they were putting the front line together to tackle all these people. It was it was like we were setting up to do a football play. Literally. I mean, they put me in the front. They said, I need you to get this corner right here because when we open up the door, they're going to come rushing in. I need you to direct them that way. And and I'm like, what am I doing? Right. I'm a cashier. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to be a cashier. So they just – I was there directing traffic and – <clears throat> the way people are during these sales is crazy. If you want to see humans turn into animals, I mean, I thought it was a bunch of mutants running up in there. <laughs> it was so crazy. They lifted up. The, for one, the store was already, people were lined up all around the store. Mm -hmm. But before I pulled up, people were already lined up around the store. And I'm like, oh man, it's gonna be bad. So uh, this was back. This was back in my drinking days. <laughs> so I went and uh, I, I, I said, man, I, I I need a drink before sure. I start this. So you know, I I might have been a little loopy, but I but but when I I got there and I was ready to tackle some people. That's how that's that's the way I had to prepare myself. I I, I imaginary I had my imaginary pads on, yep. my imaginary helmet on. And I'm looking at the first guy through that glass. I said, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> you ready? <laughs> oh, they opened up that door and they came rushing in. This is Thanksgiving. Right. This is Thanksgiving. And it's crazy. They rushed in. I seen the first guy that rushed in about five, ten minutes later. He rushed out with his stuff. And I'm like, man, we just I felt like we just got raided. I never really talked to anybody that worked for one of the stores during a Black Friday rush like that because you see you see on the news all the time uh, not just the news now but especially with social media yeah. you know you're getting all these videos of people like rushing in I mean, trampling employees like people have yep. gotten seriously yes. hurt over this, you know. Especially like like you're a bigger dude, you know what I mean. So I can understand kind of if they're gonna put people on the the proverbial front lines as <laughs> as the customers are, are are coming in. 
I would put somebody of your size and, you know, at that position. I'm not putting a 70 year old grandma right. you know, out there and yep. expect her to hold hold court because that's not going to happen. I was ready. It's it's absolute. <laughs> I bet you were. Oh because, my I, I mean, I could see it. Kind I had of, kind the stance of, and I everything. Know, I'm man. telling you. I, you threw an aura <laughs> out, and I'm just like, look, man, this ain't Kansas no more, bro. <laughs> um, but it hammers home what I was referring to. In terms of the deterioration of, uh, and you said it perfectly. You 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 want to see humans turn to animals? Throw a ninety-eight dollar big screen TV up for sale, and and you're going to see that. You're going to see people go nuts over these DVDs and Blu-ray discs. You're right. You know, video yep. games that that are, that are discounted. Look, I understand that there's a market for this stuff. I truly do. But, I mean, do we really have to threaten to, you know, almost shank people over 25-cent bath towels? That was my experience on a Black Friday. I talked about it on the podcast. I'll, I'll talk about it real quick here. <laughs> I was tasked to get something from the electronic department. But the line, and you know, you've worked this thing, come to find yep. out. You're, they tried to designate lines for every department. Yep. This particular yep. one zigzagged through the men's department, through, through all kinds of different things before you even got to <laughs> the electronic department. Now, the way the line was, I was positioned right in front of a this great big box, 25 cent towels. The, now look, <laughs> I'm six foot two inches tall. At the time, probably around the 230 pound mark. Like I'm a bigger dude, and like this five foot, probably 65 to 70 year old woman, and I'm going to use the PG version of this. All of a sudden, says to me, looks up at me, says to me, "You need to get the out of my way," and like. <laughs> I had to, I had, <laughs> I had to quickly assess the situation, okay, because I felt like with the amount of venom that came out of this little woman's voice, <laughs> it was not out of the realm that somewhere in her purse may have been an, a, a, an item of sorts that could do irreparable damage to me. Right. I was concerned, but I had to assure her, ma'am, I am not here for your 25 cent towels. <laughs> you can have the whole damn box if you if that's what it's gonna take, because I don't need to be cut over this. Uh, but that is just one example. Dish towels, Q. Dish towels. You're gonna hurt people, you're gonna <laughs> talk to people. This is somebody's grandmother, I have no doubt. Um, and that's kind of what's going to lead me into um, our final thoughts for th this episode. Uh, the fact of the matter is, let's get back to the basic fundamentals. Let's get back to what this holiday is truly all about. It's to give thanks. Because every one of you have blessings in your life. And I realize that so some of you are going through uh, rather tumultuous times. There's a lot of change in the air. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of things going on that can be categorized as less than ideal. I totally understand that. And I can totally, I can totally understand how that would alter your mood, your, the way you're looking at the holiday season. But let's strip away from all of the things that really in the grand scheme of things may be a contributor to the way you feel right now, but it doesn't have to be the dominant the way that you feel. Right. Give thanks for what you have in your life because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It could always, always be worse, okay? Your first blessing every day is that you wake up because some people don't. You need to embrace each and every day for what it truly is. It's a yeah. blessing. It's a blessing. It is an opportunity to make an impact, either for yourself or for somebody that means something to you. Or if you are, if you're like us and you kind of look at the big picture, you're trying to find ways to make a positive difference in the world around us. 
I give thanks every day for the people in my life. I thank God every day for the people in my life, those who mean the most to me. Because I know the feeling of coming into a holiday season where there is an empty chair at the table or two. I know what that feels like. And I know what level of guilt comes into play when you start to realize, oh, I took that person for granted or I took advantage of this situation. I don't do that anymore. I'm very much in tune with who I am, what I am, and what's important to my life. And I make damn good and sure, not just on the last Thursday in, in November, every possible opportunity that, that I can to show my thanks, yeah. to show my appreciation, and to show people how much that they truly do mean to me. It just so happens that this is a holiday built around that. Now, uh, personally speaking, and then I'll turn this o over to Q for his final thoughts, I wanted to take an opportunity to say thank you to all of you, the ones who tune in to this show each and every month, the ones who read what we do on social media, the ones who listen to the podcast on, on the PFC Podcast Network. Thank you. Because without you, there would be no reason to do this. And to the, the magnificent people here at Orion N Neighborhood Television that take time out of their day to allow us to come in here once a month to do things like this because they believe in what we're doing. I appreciate them, and I'm so very thankful for, for them. Ian Locke, um, Joe Johnson especially. You know, Joe kind of runs the show here for us here on the Klaus and Q show. So, I mean, without him, this wouldn't be a thing. And I hope he, and, and, I mean, I know he's in the control room watching this, but I hope he really truly un understands just what he means to us yes. personally and professionally in terms of this operation because, it, I mean, he's the one kind of pushing the buttons here. This could all go black just like yep. that if you wanted to. Uh, but he believes in us. And like I'm, I will always try to find a way to illustrate my my appreciation and, and just how thankful I am for him. So go out this week, this holiday season, from now till the end of the year, find ways where you can make a positive difference in your community. Find you know the Salvation Army or mm -hmm. some other organization or charity that really needs some help, legitimate ones. You you kind of gotta do a little bit of a deep dive in some cases just to make sure they're on the up and up because, well, there's still some buttholes in the world. Yep. But be that as it may, we have an opportunity to really make a lot of people's holiday that much brighter, right? That's yeah. right. Thank you for everything. Q, I'll turn it over to you. I just want to say thank you all that uh, support us and even personal, you know, our fam families that, you know, support us uh, just thank you you know support us on everything that we do Joe Johnson man he's, he's the man uh, so just want to thank him and um, to the veterans still I just want to reiterate that you know we honor you also absolutely uh, and we appreciate you and just keep being strong and doing what you are doing very stay well motivated said. guys yeah very very well said and uh, we certainly wish each and every one of you a very safe and happy Thanksgiving holiday. We will be back here live on ON TV on December the 16th, Friday night, beginning at 6 p.m. You can see it live streamed exclusively on the ON TV's Facebook page. And then a day or two later, uh, you can catch the official replay uh, over on their YouTube channel. Just look for Orion ON TV. With that, be awesome to yourselves and to each other. We'll see you right back here next month on December the 16th for the next installment of the Klaus and Q Show here live on Orion Neighborhood Television.